In an interview this morning, President Obama warned against what he called hysteria over the Brexit vote. With us now is Ger Gerard Baker. He is editor-in-chief of the Wall Street Journal, and we're pleased to have him here. Welcome. Morning. Are we witnessing a kind of rising tide of populism against globalization, and what will be its impact? Yes, we are. I mean, I think you see it obviously in the UK vote to leave the EU. 17 million people in Britain voted. That's more people voted for something than have ever voted for anything in Britain's history. It's the largest vote ever in British history. You're seeing it in other parts of Europe. I think one of the consequences of the vote in Britain is that there will be a spread uh, of, this, uh, of this desire to kick back against globalization. You're seeing it here in this country. You're okay. seeing it around the world. Tell us what globalization means to those people who want to kick it back. What it means is that they're, they're, they feel that they have lost the ability to control their own lives, their own destiny. In the last 35 years, there has been massive global flows of capital, of money going around the world. There's been trade. Trade exploded from, from the 1970s at an, enormous, uh, at an enormous rate. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, with the rise of China, with the breaking down of trade barriers, you had these extraordinary flows of trade, of money around the world. Now, that's been a good thing in many, many ways, but a lot of people lose out from that, especially people in wealthier countries who are well-paid, uh, who have historically enjoyed sec job security. When new countries come along who, where the pay is much lower, where incomes are much lower, uh, you can expect them to compete very much more favorably with the existing establishment. And so that's what's happened. You've seen people massively insecure because as a result of this globalization, and they are pushing against it. You see President Obama, though, in this interview just this morning, the warning against hysteria. He said, I wouldn't overstate it. It's, it's as if it's somehow NATO's gone, the transatlantic alliance is dissolving, and every country is rushing off its own corner. That is not what is happening. What True. do you make of him trying he, to tamp down? He's right. Look, I speak as an Englishman, I've, but I've lived in the United States for more than 20 years. I'm a little bit shocked by the behavior of my old, own Englishman. We're all familiar with that, mm -hmm. those things that we see on teacups everywhere, keep calm and carry on. I mean, the British people are not exactly behaving in more yeah. indeed than the rest of the <laughs> Europeans. <laughs> 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 yeah, yes. He yeah. had a vote. It was a de it's a democratic <laughs> system. It, it's not the end of the world. The, the power, there has been tremendous turbulence on the markets, as you would expect, mm -hmm. because what the British have done is injected tremendous uncertainty into the global economy yeah. and into the global political system. But the president's right. I mean, this is not, this isn't, nothing's going to, nothing's going to collapse <laughs> The sky is today. not falling. But what yeah, do you make about reports, Jerry, the next day that pe people were filled with regret, they were saying, buyer's remorse, let's have a do-over. Four million people so far have signed a petition. Yeah, best of three, I think some people suggested yes. maybe we should make it. Look, you have a democracy, you have a vote, people voted. And I must say, on this issue, the people you're hearing from, the, the, the establishment in Britain, the political, media, business, corporate establishment was against Brexit, firmly against Brexit. They're the the ones who control the narrative. The ones who voted against it are what a great British poet described as the secret people, uh -huh. the quiet people, the people you don't hear from very much. They're not right. They were the people 17... that we in America call the silent majority. Well, I, that ago. has that has historical connotations, Charlie, that yeah. I wouldn't necessarily go yeah. there. But, I, but but these are people who don't have Twitter accounts and don't speak uh -huh. loudly and don't appear on television. They voted. They're not going to undo their vote. But is the vote against the establishment? Period. It's a vote against the establishment, but it's one really important thing, and this is a rising trend around the world. It's, it's, it's linked to this point about globalization. It's, it, was, it is a nationalist vote. People yeah. believe that their countries have lost their sovereignty. They think that, that but, things like the European Union, things like world trade, have undermined the people's but, ability to run their own country, and they want to take their country back. But people fear that the rising nationalism also means right-wing, far right-wing extremism. And it does contain elements of that, but, but it's by no means all that. I mean, it is people who want, who are not racist, who are not anti-immigration. They want to control immigration. They want to control their country's destiny. They want to be able to uh, decide what happens to their country. They, they believe that the national, that national entity, that nations are still the legitimate form of uh, democratic accountability, and they want to restore national rights. It's not, it's not an ugly national. It can be, but in this case, I think it's not. Thank you right, for coming. Thank you, Come back. Thank you for having me. Yes.